Brethren, be greeted in the name of Jesus. It gives me a great honor and pleasure this morning to be sharing the word of God with you. Wherever you are, whether in the car driving, at home sitting, I want to invite you to this very special service. This is the service of the Holy Communion. And without any waste of time, shall we just bow our heads and pray. Almighty God, in the name of Jesus, I just want to thank you this morning. I give all the honor and the glory unto you because you are God. There is no one like you. We thank you for this special gift of life. It is not a right but a privilege and honor and we receive it with humility and with thanksgiving from the depth of our hearts. Thank you for this day. Thank you for your presence in the service. Because the Bible says, where two or three come together in your name, you are there in their midst. We acknowledge your presence. In the name of Jesus, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Beloved, we find our scripture reading this morning from the book of Romans chapter 8. We also read Second Chronicles chapter 20 from the Old Testament. And I just want to start by reading Romans chapter 8, verse 28 and 37. It reads thus, And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Let me repeat this verse. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who believe him, who have been called according to his purpose. And let me read in the Old Testament, Second Chronicles, chapter 20. I'm reading verses 14 to 16. It reads thus. Then the Spirit of the Lord came on Jehaziel, son of Zechariah, the son of Benaniah, the son of Jael, the son of Matthiah, a Levite, a descendant of Asaph, as he stood in the assembly, he said, Listen, King Jehoshaphat, and all who live in Judah and Jerusalem, this is what the Lord says to you. Do not be afraid or discouraged because of this vast army. For the battle is not yours, but God's. Tomorrow, march down against them. May the good Lord bless the reading of his word. It humbles me all the time when I get an opportunity to share the word of God. And this morning, as we are about to share the Holy Communion, Allow me to share with you the portions of scriptures that I've read with the following theme. God is in it with you. God is in it with you. It doesn't matter the circumstances. It doesn't matter the situations that you are going through. It doesn't matter where do you find yourself, the battles that you are fighting every day, whether in the silence chamber of our soul or the battles that are facing us every day. One thing that I want to assure you this morning is that God is in it with you. 
from Romans chapter 8, verse 28, where Paul says, And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. God works in all things, not just isolated incidents, because he works for a good cause. God is working to make us not happy, but to fulfill his purpose. In every situation in which we find ourselves, God is driving the agenda of achieving his purpose about my life and about your life. This promise is for everybody. And above all, it's also not for everybody. But it's meant for those who love God and are called according to his purpose. Such people have new mind on life. They put their trust in God. Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, is described as one of the most outstanding and successful king in Judah. And the reason for his success is because he was obedient to God. He understood one thing, that he is on earth to drive the kingdom's agenda, but not his own. Hence, he remained obedient, and many a times he will consult the prophets of God if he finds himself in any situation. But today we read about Jehoshaphat, who was invaded by the vast army of the Moabites, who mobilized, and they were a force to be reckoned with. And when his servant came in and he said to him, we are under siege because these nations are up in arms against us. When you read verse 1, he said, After this, the Moabites, after this, the Moabites and Ammonites, with some of the Munites, came to wage war against Jehoshaphat. So, in other words, these nations colluded to fight Jehoshaphat. And when you read verse 12, after Jehoshaphat got a message that he's under siege, one thing that I'm grateful and thankful about this king, he never panicked. He never wondered. I want to believe he understood that all things worketh for good for those who love God and who are called according to his people. Jehoshaphat faced a great multitude of enemies. But instead of focusing on what he would do, instead, when you read verse 12, he said in his prayer, O oh, our God, will you not judge them? For we have no power against this great multitude that is coming against us. Nor do we know what to do, but our eyes are fixed upon you. So instead of Jehoshaphat focusing on the enemies that were attacking him, he focused unto the Lord. He fixed his eyes upon the Lord. And he knew that it's only the Almighty God who can come to his rescue and make a difference in his life. He fixed his eyes upon God because he knew that his help cometh from him. Now, Jehoshaphat's prayer had several 
essential ingredients. One of the ingredients of his prayer. He committed the situation to God. Acknowledging him as the savior of the nation. He acknowledged and he committed the situation. Remember, when you are confronted with the situation, it's either you try to fight it all by yourself or you commit it to the Almighty. So Jehoshaphat resorted to commit this war or this fight unto the Lord. That is the first ingredient. The second ingredient, he sought God's favor because his people were God's people. He knew that God's favor is on his side. And he sought that favor. When number three, he acknowledged God's sovereignty over current situations. Many a times we are bottled down based on situations and circumstances that confront us. We want to fight these things by ourselves. But the lessons that we are learning from the prayer of Jehoshaphat, he acknowledged the sovereignty of the Lord over the current situation. He praised God's glory and took comfort in his promises. God is not the son of man that he should lie. All the promises that he has made about my life and about your life, God will ensure that ultimately he accomplished the particular mission, the mission and the promise that he has made. And then point number five, Jehoshaphat professed complete dependence on God, not on himself for deliverance. He knew that by depending upon his own strength, he was not going to be in a position to deal with a vast army. But one thing that he knew, he said, Lord, I depend upon you. I surrender this situation to you. And I know in your presence, I'm more than a conqueror. And I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. When we turn our eyes and we fix our eyes upon the Lord, when you read verse 15, that is how the Lord intervened through the prophet. And the Lord says, do not be afraid or discouraged because of this great multitude. Because the battle is not yours, but it's mine. The battle is not yours, but it is my battle. Because you have acknowledged my sovereignty, you have acknowledged that I'm the redeemer, I'm the master. I have. When you read verse 17, then the Lord is saying to Jehoshaphat, through the mouth of the prophet, take your position. Stand firm and see the deliverance the Lord will give you. God will fight for us. In him, we are more than conquerors. When the Lord said to Jehoshaphat, take your position, he was actually saying to him, victory is certain. Yours is just to act. Yours is just to stand firm and demonstrate the power that I'm manifesting in you. Remember, God is in it with you. God is in it with me. God is in it with us. All those who love him, all those who are called according to his purpose. And God is saying to us this morning, it doesn't matter your situation. It doesn't matter what you're going through. It doesn't matter whether you were tested positive, COVID-19. You are sitting out there at home. You just wonder what's going to happen with my life. God is in it with you. God is in it with you. No matter the sickness, the pain that you are going through, remember that when you acknowledge his sovereignty, when you acknowledge his power, he will never leave you nor forsake you. 
Because this is what he promised in his word. Now, how do we let God fight for us? We have to ensure that we realize that the battle is not ours, but it is the Lord. We must recognize our limitations as people and allow God's strength to work through us so that fear and witness can be kept out of our lives. Because God did not give us the spirit of fear, but the spirit of power, the spirit of love, the spirit of sound mind. And by making sure that we are pursuing God's interest, not our own. And lastly, by asking God for help in our daily battles. God loves you. And God cares about you. And God is in it with you today in this service. May you be blessed wherever you are. Remember one thing. For God to take his rightful position in our lives, we have to acknowledge him. We have to demonstrate our love for him. We have to open up our lives and allow him to operate through us. And this morning, I'm assuring you that the Lord is in it with you. Don't give up. Don't surrender. Don't give in to any situation. And the reason why people fail in circumstances and situations that are tough in the journey of life is because they fix their eyes on the problems that they are facing instead of looking up. Just like Jehoshaphat who said, I don't know how to deal with this situation, but I depend upon your strength and I depend upon you. And the Lord intervened and he said, don't be afraid because I am in charge. God is in charge of your life. God loves you. God cares about you. I want to conclude by saying to you, you are deeply loved. You are greatly blessed and you are highly favored. Undeserved, unmerited favor of the Lord is upon you when you love him, when you surrender all unto him. May God bless you. I want to take this opportunity at this point in time, to invite you to the table of the Lord. And when I invite you to the table of the Lord, I want you to prepare the bread and the cup in the comfort of your home. And allow the Lord to talk to you through this Holy Communion. Just as I prepare myself, to serve the Holy Communion. Beloved, today, when we partake of the bread, we are declaring that Jesus' health and divine life flows in our mortal bodies. And when we partake of the cup, we are declaring that we are forgiven and have been made righteous. Jesus' blood gives us right standing before God. 
I'm inviting you to take your bread. I want to believe that you have the bread with you wherever you are. And as we take this bread, I want you to repeat after me wherever you are. Thank you, Father, for the gift of your Son. By the stripes that fell on his back, my body is healed. From the crown of my head to the very sole of my feet, every cell, every organ, Every function of my body is healed, restored, and renewed. In Jesus' name, I believe and I receive. Shall we eat together? I'm now inviting you to take let's take the cup and together let's declare. Lord Jesus, thank you for your precious blood. Your sin-free, disease-free, poverty-free life in your blood. And you shed your blood for me and removed every sin from my life. Through your blood, I am forgiven of all my sins, past, present, and future, and made completely righteous. Today, I celebrate and partake of the inheritance of the righteous, which is preservation healing, wholeness, and provision. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for loving me. Shall we drink together? Let us give thanks unto the Lord. Almighty God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we just want to thank you. Thank you, Almighty God, for the assurance that indeed you are in it with us. You are in every situation, every space, any battle that we face, any form of discomfort, pain, whatever. We received an assurance that you are in it with us. We thank you for your word. And above all, we have just shared the communion, Almighty God. The reunion, the bond between us. When I read this, I read Kasalalo se or katamu se michao. Kiara pen. Rito se se uri dibui len kamelo me yaruna. Rishla ona lo fat se uri zehanike. Bless each and every one of us. We have just declared the bread. We have declared the cup. Right now, we have eaten. We are blessed, and we are grateful. In the most powerful name, the name that is above all other names, the name of Jesus. We bless you, we honor you for your kingdom's sake.
Brethren, God bless you. And may he give you strength as you rise wherever you are. Remember, God is in it with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. He is in control. Trust him. Submit to him. And have a blessed day. Mudimu wa tukano lafate. Mudimu wa ite hanu. Ibalita sidele manahe.